Hello, I am Joey Dillon, Hollywood Armorer. I do a lot of Western. That means I use a lot of five in one blanks. So, I thought it'd be kind of cool to share the modern five in one and compare it to the original five in one blank. To me, the five in one blank is like the grandfather of the blanks. It holds a special place in my heart because to me, that's all the old school Westerns. No. The five in one blank is just, is, is an icon. So let's talk a little bit about it. So the five in one blank came about in the earlier days of making Westerns. They needed a universal blank to make things easier on the productions and the, and the, for the armor and stuff. <coughs> and so they came up with the five in one blank and it fit five different guns not five different calibers <laughs> rifles and 3840 rifles and 4440 revolvers and 3840 revolvers and 4440 and colt revolvers and 45 that is your five different things in one blank it seems like they could have been a bit simpler and said hey it's a three in one and it this blank takes the place of three different calibers because we're only talking about those three specific cartridges but in a bunch of different guns and gun platforms. So kind of weird how they did that. Your two rifle categories would typically be your lever actions, 1892 model Winchester, 1873 model Winchester. They did make an LT gray, which was a clone of the 92 Winchester, made those in Spain. I will be showing one in here in a minute. And so that would be your rifles used on all these old Westerns that would be chambered in the 3840, 4440. Then we move into the revolvers. Most of the time we're talking about your Colt single action army, again, talking Westerns. Uh, there was a couple other Colt models that would be chambered for these. There are other gun companies that were using, I know specifically the 4440 Winchester round, Merwin and Holbert offered some of their guns in that round. I have a Shreve and Wolf, which was a company in San Francisco that imported guns and then sent them on their way with the Shreve and Wolf name. It is in 4440. So it's, it's saying revolvers, any revolvers in these two uh, calibers. But it specifically says Colt revolvers in the 45. And I do believe that's because, correct me if I'm wrong, that's Colt's round. It would take, uh, you know, any of the early Colts to take that. I don't think other companies were offering their guns in Colt's round. So that's why it's specific to the Colt for the 45 versus just revolvers in either the 3840 or the 4440. So yeah, kind of complicated, but I hope you get it. I hope you're tracking with me. Back then on these old Westerns, they were using original guns. Later, we started having reproductions of these awesome guns made, a lot of them made in Italy. So you could get now a lever action rifle chambered in the Colt 45, whereas back then you could not. Um, you can get it, shoot some of these old guns down 44 uh, Magnum, which was around that wasn't around when they created five and one blanks. So there have been other cartridges um, invented since the early days of five and one blanks that these will fit into and other guns now that these will fit into so you could say now that this these this particular famous blank is could be called a many more in one but originally five and one meant those five categories in those three specific uh cartridges 38 40 44 40 and cold 45 i hope you're tracking with me kind of complicated but it's all there and hope you figured it out with me this is kind of the cool thing on the early box that i got here she says right there on the back. Why listen to this fool? Let's get it over with! 38-40 rifle, 44-40 rifle, 38-40 revolver, 44-40 revolver, 45 Colt revolver. The 5-in-1 prime case cases on a hammer neck. <laughs> now I've got some modern 5-in-1 blanks on the table here we'll talk about. I also got an original box of Stembridge Black Powder 5-in-1 half loads. This is pretty sweet. This is, uh, if you're not familiar with Stembridge Gun Rentals, they were the premier gun rental house from the 20s all the way. Uh, all the major movies had used 
Stembridge since the early days. I think they, they slowed down quite a bit, sold off a lot of their inventory and eventually closed down, I think in 07. But if you don't know much about Stembridge and you're interested in this stuff, you should go online, do a Google search and uh, check them out. But this is an early box. It's even got the five, uh, five digit telephone number. Here's a modern five in one. It is a crimped front. Uh, no, no wad, it's just crimped. Worth noting, when I talk about the crimped front end, it's not unique just to the five and one, it's pretty much every blank we use has a crimped front end. Uh, there are some exceptions. On a rare occasion, I might have just a, a shell with a foam wad in the front versus the crimped. Uh, but let's say I have some uh, Colt 45 blanks. They will be a shorter case and just crimped over to hold the powder in because it's going in a revolver and it can be whatever length it needs to as long as it doesn't stick out in front of the cylinder, but long enough just to hold the powder charge. In a five-in-one situation, you have to worry about cycling and feeding through your lever action rifle, so it needs to be the same length as a live round with the bullet, not just a shell that's uh, crimped over so it still needs to be as long as if it had the projectile on the front so that it feeds the same so that's why the five and one is longer than other blanks before it is then crimped over so that it matches the length and the front rounded edges uh, so that it moves and cycles through the rifle Esther. clear anyway so winchester 92 of course, John Wayne and everybody used these, the Riflemen. Everybody, no matter what time frame it was, they cheated and used, <laughs> a lot of times, the uh, 1892. So this is actually an El Tigre. This is the copy made in Spain from the teens up into the 30s. They used a lot of these on some of the old Westerns. Uh, this is the shorter barrel. So loaded up, five and one. And then it's got to come up and then cycle right down into the chamber. The early blanks, and I'll delicately, I'm going to delicately open up my, my baby here. Stembridge. It's pretty sweet. Look at the way this is packaged. This is incredible. Ooh. <laughs> so these are what the original ones look like. And you'll notice it still simulates having a bullet on top of the cartridge there, but it is open-ended and you can see that it does have a wad in it. And the wads were uh, marked. So this does say half a little comparison test there. And, uh, you can see the, the difference in the neck and the shape of the cartridge compared to the original here. Now, what's interesting about the modern ones we use, they'll have different color designations to show you if the cartridge is out of the box, which one you've got there. Similar to the original open mouth five and one blank versus the full crimped is what we still use today, which is the primed case. So five and one prime case. This is just a primer. So there's absolutely nothing down the pipe of that blank, but they still rolled, extended and rolled the front so that it would feed and chamber in your lever action guns. So. What are you waiting for? Some would say, why? Why would you want that? Sometimes you need the gun to make a loud report without a bunch of fire and smoke belching out of the muzzle. And it could be, it could be a, a distance thing. Uh, actors or, or, or performers are too close to where that gun is waving around. With CGI, they're going to put muzzle flash stuff in there anyway. So if a stunt actor is running away or riding his horse away and he has to be shot off the horse to have an, a sound to react to, you might use a prime case or something like that so that the uh, one actor can fire, they can hear, they know when to fall or get shot and go down and things like that. 
Now the five in one prime case in the spectrum of loudness is below the eighth load in a sense, but just the primer with the open mouth there is pretty loud. There's not as much of a boom as there is a crack. So anyway, we should shoot one. And uh, it's my 1902 Colt. Uh, I love this gun. Someday we're gonna do a video just on this gun. Anyway, we'll go ahead and load that in there. We'll bring it around. Now this is a 45. So this is one of the five guns that this blank, the original five one was made for. And then we'll come out of the holster and get her to go off. Let's do one more. In there. Come you should watch Veracruz. I love that movie. So, Burt Lancaster starts walking away from the bad guy behind him. Takes the gun. Whoo, fires behind him. It's a great move. So, walk in. Pull. So, this is what the boxes look like. It would be quarter load. Triple seven is the powder. And then crimp primer. Five and one. And 50 rounds. So, Triple seven, black powder substitute. I use it more than I ever order black powder. Sometimes I order black powder, uh, but the triple seven doesn't foul the gun up as quick. It still has comparable smoke and muzzle flash and uh, a lot easier to clean. If this was black powder, it would say quarter black. If it was any other normal blank that wasn't a specific powder request like triple seven or black powder, doing a modern show it doesn't have to be a smoky have to just replicate you know smokeless powder it would say quarter flash or full flash so anyway that's your quarter low triple seven crimped primer sometimes labeled as cp uh, is interesting the blanks when you fire the blanks with physics and all and there's no projectile coming out of the muzzle no recoil what happens a lot of times is the primer will actually back out of the rear of the cartridge just a little bit. And then you go to cock the revolver and then the revolver tries to revolve and that primer is dragging against the back of the frame there and jams the gun. So they actually seat the primer and then they ping over a little bit of uh, brass from the shell to lock the primer in so it cannot back out. So that is why it says that. This would be your five in one primed case. Five and one full again triple seven the powder typically i will use prime case eighth loads quarter loads full loads eighth loads have been good to me for when the quarter loads are just a little too hot around the animals especially the horses quarter is usually the max you can do around the horses um the eighth loads though do offer me a little bit of a an option to go a little softer still get a little smoke a little fire don't use anything between the quarter and the full. Typically, every once in a while, I'll order half loads. But if you can be super loud, why not take full advantage of that? Since your safety distances are going to be the same for the full load or the half load, you might as well get all the fire and smoke you can get for that take. So have full load standing by for that, but you don't need halves. I've never ordered three quarter um, in town. Sometimes the most you can do is a quarter load or some of the specific movie ranches like Melody Ranch is located in the New Hall, Santa Cruz area in Southern California. And with the local ordinances, a quarter is as loud as you're allowed to do there. Um, so a quarter load is what I use the most. But uh, every once in a while, we get to load up foals and have a little fun with that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in my, my workshop here and talking about some unique stuff. Not, it's not everybody's cup of tea, but... It's yours and I'm glad you are here.